In the last tutorial, I looked at how to use buffer and intersection uh, to solve the problem of trying to find all communities in Scotland that were within three kilometers from a railway station. There are a couple of other ways that we could have done the same thing. Uh, another way of doing it that allows you to change dynamically uh, the distance um, is to use distance to hub, uh, which is one of the tools in the processing toolbox. Um, I'm just going to continue right off from the layers that we used last time. You can see uh, the remnants of uh, the layers from the last uh, uh, tutorial, which includes uh, settlement centroids um, that we previously joined together with some population data and um, a uh, collection of uh, railway stations and a coastline from natural earth data. So if I show uh, all of the settlements here, and uh, let's get rid of the selection. Now uh, turn on the railways. Uh, last time when we created a buffer and then we looked for the intersection, we were left with just uh, these points here. Let's do the same thing now, uh, but use uh, the tool in the, uh, in the processing toolbox, which you can find by going up to the processing menu, choosing toolbox, and searching for distance to nearest hub. You'll see that there are two options here. Uh, they're listed in my recently used uh, tools as well. One is line to hub, and the other one is points. If we do line to hub, it will find uh, the nearest hub uh, to any given point uh, defined by a layer of points uh, that you give it, and then draw a line between them, which will contain the distance data, just to show you what that looks like really quickly. Um, so these are the spokes, the towns, and in our case, the hub is the railway stations. Um, we tell it what station name uh, column we're going to use, uh, and then we run this, and you'll end up with something like this, where for every different community, it shows you the nearest uh, railway station. But in this case, to find out what the distances are, we actually push on the, uh, click on the lines themselves. Um, so uh, you end up with some strange results too. For example, uh, it will not really pay attention to the coastlines. So it suggests that the closest railway station from Ely is North Berwick Railway Station, uh, which obviously is across the water and, and not terribly helpful. Um, but uh, uh, this is a problem that we're going to face uh, uh, without using additional uh, methods to give it some indication of, of where not to go and where to go. OK, I'm going to delete that one. And um, let's run the tool again. But this time, we'll do distance to nearest hub in points. Our spokes are the settlements, and the hubs are the rail references. Choosing the station name and running in the background. Now you should see, if I turn off the railways and the joined settlements, and pan over here, We have all of the sediments in Scotland will now have added to them in this new layer a hub distance and a hub name column. It'll tell you the nearest railway station and it'll tell the hub distance. So this is 20 kilometers away from the nearest one. Um, we did an intersection layer showing all stations that are within three kilometers. But that was a one-time deal based on the creation of a buffer that was uh, 3,000 meters. Uh, now that we have this hub distance uh, layer, we can just filter this layer here. 
and uh, give it any arbitrary uh, hub distance. If I double click on hub distance and I say it's less than 3000, then we will have reproduced the exact same result as our intersection layer. If, uh, if I turn on the intersection layer and turn off the hub distance, you'll see that they're they composed of the exact same points. Now, the advantage to using the hub distance approach is that if I then change my mind, I was like, you know, actually, I'm willing to live anywhere that's within five kilometers of a railway station. It starts adding more points and so on. And that's all there is to it. Uh, I think that it, it goes to show that there are a lot of interesting tools in the processing toolbox um, that you can play with. Um, I just found this one by exploring rather than learning about it by some other means. Um, sometimes when you open them up, they don't give you any suggestion as to how they should be used. Uh, but in other cases, uh, you'll get a little brief description of how they work.